It's a rainy day. Share my umbrella. Well, yes, but uh, say, you're not the kind of fella who'd uh, ask me over to his apartment just to look at the pictures. Well, uh, it's a rainy day. A rainy day? We can't go walking. I know, but uh, we can stand here talking. But then I'm hoarse. And you've forgotten your goulashes. <laughs> See, it's a rainy day. Honey, would a drink do you good? Yeah, I think that it would, uh, somehow. I vow. Well, may I ask for a sip? Uh, got a flask on your hip right now? Well, uh, not now, but here comes a cab. Come on, let's grab it. Well, I don't trust men who have that habit. Well, you really might get uh, double pneumonia. Gee, it's a rainy day. A rainy day? You know, I'm really glad I met you. A rainy day, I won't forget you. Gee, you know it's nice that we can both be sharing this taxi. It's such a rainy day. Well, then why don't you come on and stop being formal? Oh, no, uh, take it easy now. Get right back to normal. Or else, you know, you'll be the only one in this taxi. Yeah, well, it's still a rainy day. What I sought long in vain, I have caught in the rain today. Yes, it looks like it's my day. Do I look like a fish? Well, I'm hooked and I wish to stay all day. That's it. Now I'll take you home. Thanks. But not to your home. Oh, well, uh, do you think I'll feel at home in your home? Absolutely. And then we'll begin where we leave off in this taxi. All on a rainy day. Is that okay, honey? Okay. Driver, take us to the YMCA. Hi, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I'm back with another kitchen counter thrift haul. Just look at all that stuff. And I have a surprise for you. But before I tell you my surprise, I will first begin by saying... A cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you. A cozy corner, a table. Today's cup of coffee is brought to you by subscriber Garland. Now you saw me open this up in my last this and that video. Uh, thank you Garland once again. This was a wonderful gift that he sent. Knowing that I enjoy a cup of coffee every afternoon with a ginger snap. And there it is with the mustache protector right there. And Garland, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I actually got out the silver teapot because we're uptown right now with this china cup. I don't know how to behave. Let me see if I can slurp anyway, show you what a heathen I am. Mm, mm, mm. That's hot. Okay, well, I guess I'm not that uptown, <laughs> but there it is. It's beautiful. And uh, the silver teapot is not for sale. That's just teasing. Okay, let's see what's for sale. Okay, what's my surprise? Well, my surprise is and you will be delighted. I have gotten myself organized. Now we'll see how long this lasts. Every single thing, except my silver teapot and mustache cup, other than that, everything you see on this kitchen counter is for sale in the old curiosity shop. I'm not keeping any of it. And it's all currently listed. That's right, it's all up and running right now, most of it as auctions, but a few as buy it now. Now the auctions run for seven days and I listed some of these things one or two days ago. So if you see anything you like, why don't you visit the old curiosity shop? I would appreciate it. And if nothing strikes your fancy this time, don't worry. I'm always looking for wonderful things from the 1920s into the 60s. 
for sale in Scottsdale Curiosity Shop. By the way, also, those of you who watch me, you know that that milkshake mixer back there is not for sale either. Okay, but everything else is, and it's all available right now. So let's dive right in. A few of these things you've seen before, but I didn't have them listed, so I want to come back again and tell you that these three plates right here are glass, and I think I mistakenly said Old Colony. It's really Old Cafe, and they're made by Anchor Hocking. And it's in their ruby red color. I have three of these. You can call it whatever you want. It's not a saucer. Uh, it actually is a kind of a plate, but it's in the shape of a bowl, so you may place inside of that whatever you find thrilling. Also by Anchor Hocking are these uh, not Platinite, that's Hazel Atlas. What am I trying to say? Vit Vitrock um, Lotus Leaf Plates. I've got four of them. Now, they do not have their uh, Blossom Cup. There was a cup that sat right in here. You can Google it and see it, or you, you'll see it on eBay. I've shown them to you before. So these are just the underplates, and it is a glass material that's similar to Hazel Atlas's uh, Platinite. It's kind of like a milk glass. Uh, but anyway, these are lotus leaf plates, and these would be fine, really, even to serve cake on, I suppose, um, without the little cusp, without the cups that sit in the center. I bet, let me, well, I don't know why I'm standing way back here. Let me, let me get in here and let you see them. They're beautiful. I don't think they've been used. If they have, they've seen very light wear because there's no utensil marks, and there are no chips or cracks. Believe me, unless something has a chip or a crack, I'll tell you, otherwise, everything is in perfect shape. These are in great shape, too, without any utensil marks. Three of these, four of these. Back there are the mid-century modern vases. Swung vases, one in blue and one in amber. They're both footed, as you can see, or on little pedestals. Um, I'm not very good at de determining whether they're made by Viking or Ellie Smith or any of the other companies because this is really only on the cusp of my area. Uh, of interest or experience, but they are uh, mid-century vases, and um, they're, you can have, oh, by the way, better pictures of anything without this somewhat distracting backsplash can be seen on my uh, eBay page, so go there if you'd like better pictures, but this is a beautiful mid-century blue color, um, there's no sick glass or, you know, calcium deposit, water deposit, uh, stains inside of this and it's uh, very thick and heavy very fat bottom pardon the expression and uh, the amber one over here is a little on the unusual side too with sort of a uh, honeycomb pattern at the bottom okay that's for my 1960s folks this is wonderful and believe me if I had two candlesticks I wouldn't be selling it this is made by the Cambridge Glass Company, and they call this blue Azurite. Um, it's not Delphite, that was a different color, and that was made by, let's see, Anchor Hocking made a Delphite color. And this actually dates to the 1920s, to about 1930. It's gilded and embossed. Some of the gilding is coming off, but that usually happens. Um, that's just a mark on the bottom that happened during production. There would have been two candlesticks, ball candlesticks with a console bowl in the center. Sadly, we only have one candlestick, but it's a beautiful color. And I'm convinced that someone out there has the other candlestick. From the same era, although I don't know who the maker was, could have been any one of those glass companies of the 20s and 30s. Again, um, Duncan Miller, Cambridge, Lancaster, on and on. You know the names of the companies, Heisey, so forth. Um, it's a fan vase. It's embossed. It's pink, although sometimes pink doesn't always show up. You'll have to just trust me on this. It's a very delicate color of pink. And that right there is not a scratch. It's what's called in the trade a straw mark. Um, and it happens during production, during production or during cooling, and you just have to get used to that with glass from this era. You'll get these little marks in there, and folks who aren't used to it will often say, Oh, it's cracked! Well, that's not a crack. It's called a straw mark. Okay, fan vase. Here is the um, tumble-up water tumbler set with the carafe, and this is the matching set. 
You've got the uranium glass bottom and top. You put your water in there, you set it on your bedside table, and you, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to rinse out your dentures, you just pour yourself some ice water and go at it. Now this is a very delicate, very thin piece of glass, and it is in this ribbed optic uh, pattern which does match the bottom. I don't think I'm, my camera work is very good today. I don't, I'm not sure why I'm having such issues. So that one is all set. That dates to about 1930, 1925 to 1935. <clears throat> I don't know the pattern, but it's Royal Ruby by Anchor Hawking. And um, remember we saw these over here. So this is the same. Actually, it's too bad I don't have four of those because these would fit beautifully right in the center as under, under plates, although they're kind of big. Anyway, wouldn't your Christmas pudding look delightful in that on a green tablecloth? Again, this is a style that comes from uh, the mid-century era of the, well, actually, you know, I'm never really quite sure on all of these dates. We're just going to say the 40s and the 50s. Some of these date to the early 30s. That might be an early, uh, I mean late 30s. Anyway, I've got four of these little two-handled dessert bowls by Anchor Hawking in that pattern. These could be reproduction. I'm not certain that pattern was re reproduced. It's pink glass, and I think it's called Florentine number no. two. And oh my goodness. Um, anyway. Yeah, so they're little juice tumblers. Um, they're in excellent condition. They did reproduce this pattern, and uh, these very well may be the reproductions. So I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, if you like them, buy them. And so, yes, I'm not really sure whether they're the reproductions or not, but uh, it's pretty glass nonetheless. Uh, here we have a souvenir plate from Florida. I picked it up. Uh, oh, I don't remember where I was, but I like the flamingo, the palm trees, the oranges, it's all there. And there are two holes on the back if you want to hang that up in your kitchen. This is probably a 19... late... mid-60s to mid-70s plate, probably. This one, because of that square shape, is much earlier. Uh, square uh, plates with a sort of... Um, not beveled off edge, what do you call that? Anyway, this was a popular style in the 1930s and 40s. Plates in this particular shape. It's unmarked, it's probably American, and it is the Lord's Prayer with pansies around the side. There's crazing in the glaze. Um, this is the kind of plate, although there, this doesn't have holes in it for hanging, you could put the wire rack on the back and put that in the kitchen. How many of our grandmothers had the Lord's Prayer plates in their kitchens? Mine did. And here's that candy dish everybody was so excited about. And I'm excited too because let me bring it forward and show it to you in the light, a little bit better in the light. And I've got really good pictures of it uh, online. Let me bend down here so that you can really see it's, um, it, it's a couple of people thought, well, maybe it's amber, but the blue is just making it look, well, I don't, I, I really, it's just a very odd color. So I, I wouldn't really say that that's necessarily amber. Don't get fooled by the yellow lights that are back there. Let's get up here. Anyway, you guys be the judge. I, I think I'm calling it like a seaweed green. Um, amber with a touch of green in it. I also had a few people say, oh, somebody painted that blue on there. It doesn't look right. Nope, that's the way it was manufactured. And when you handle a lot of glass from this period, you get used to that. It is a... First of all, this is cut to clear, so the base color, the color of the glass is, is this, whatever you want to call that, amber, seaweed, green, and then it's etched and cut away to the clear there, you can see that, okay? That's that floral design that's cut into it. But then this is actually painted in the factory. Somebody didn't do this at home, uh, that's not a do-it-yourself job, that is factory made and it's a very thick uh, kind of an enamel paint and you see that it was a very popular finish circa 1930 now when i say 1930 you know 1925 to 1935 and all of the companies did this when i say all of them 
Uh, you, you can find examples of this dish, and I'm going to put a few of them up right now. Take a look. Uh, here's a picture, and I'm going to have to do this by memory because I don't remember right now, but I think one is Cambridge and one is Heisey. They're not the exact same dish, but they're in the very same style. They have that etching and the two-tone color on that. So this would be called a sweet meat or a bonbon uh, dish. Sweet meats are also candies, candied fruits, that kind of thing. And again, as I said, extremely popular in the 1920s and 30s. Now this one does have a little chip under the lid. Let's turn it upside down to make sure you see that. And that chip is... Where is it? Oh, come on now. Okay, here it is. Turn around. It's right there. You, what, you can barely see it. Do you see that? Hold on, let's get it up here. Okay, there it is. There's the chip. See, it's on the underside of the rim. So, I mean, it's there. I want you to see it. And I'm not calling that a flea bite. I'm actually calling it a chip. I mean, some of these chips that people refer to flea bites, I don't know what kind of miracle grow or steroids their fleas are on, but let's call a chip a chip, all right? That's a chip. Although, when the lid is in place, and let's put it in place right there, okay. So, you can't feel it, but if I zoom in on it, it looks horrible, right? Like, ah, look at that awful chip, but it's focus back in again uh, it, it really with the lid in place it's not that noticeable but I want you to know that it's there and of course I say that in my listing and I have a photograph of it in the listing but it really is a beautiful dish it's an odd color combination um, and it's really growing on me so uh, that actually currently has bids you saw this before I was gonna keep it but I decided I don't need it it's a Cowan signed right there uh, flower frog in porcelain It's a little salt and pepper shaker set here. I don't know who made them um, Mid-century 40s 50s these cute little things sit right on this caddy as you can see And I love this little sort of peacock tail or turkey tail behind it Okay, those are adorable and then uh, here is, these are red plastic lids. Here are other, here are two more little mini salt and peppers. And um, this doesn't match them, but it came with it. You can see the pattern on the glass is not the same, but all three of these I'm selling together. It's a little plastic lid, little plastic spoon for your sugar. So that set's going together as a set. All right, there are, I guess those are clowns or some kind of little circus people. I'm not really sure what they are. Uh, they're salt and pepper shakers. They're made in Japan, and they simply say Japan on the bottom. Can we focus here? All right. This one, this head on this one is very... I don't know if they were influenced by Holt Howard. If you know your Holt Howard, you'll know that lots of Holt Howard pieces have that funny little hat and these uniquely shaped ears, so Holt Howard-esque, but uh, simply marked Japan on the bottom. You saw this desk set before. I have decided to sell it because I no longer use a great big desk anymore as I used to, um, and so I've decided I'm going to part with this Onyx desk set, which is made by Diamond Point. Uh, let's flip it upside down. There it is. And I don't... Hold on. Ouch! I'm trying to get it... You know what? Some days it just doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. And right now... Okay, fine. That's fine with me. Uh, beautiful Onyx set. Difficult to find one as complete as that. So the letter holder, the ink blotter, the letter opener, um, the fountain pen stand with an original old uh, fountain pen, okay, and a perpetual calendar. For those who might not know that term, this calendar is never going to be out of date 
because we can change the month and let's do that to September and we can also slide the days of the week so that they line up with the correct number you see there's a nifty little thing back here that you slide and I don't know what today's date is so I can't really do this properly but you get the idea okay so that's the way that works and by the way there are no chips you often find on the corners little chips where a piece of this onyx marble has been dropped and broken nothing it's from the art deco era of oh mid 30s mid to late 30s could even be early 40s on that set Here's the Scotty Dog bookend that you saw me thrift the other day. It's just one. It's made out of wood. I love it. It's made in Japan. We have a lot of Scotty, Scotty Dog collectors, and that's going to be a 1930s piece. And while we're talking about Scotty Dogs, wow. I think there are 16 of them. I believe two of them are occupied Japan and the other two are simply made in Japan. There's not a break. Listen to me now. There's not a chip or a break or a repair on any of them. They're all perfect. Now, these two right here were connected. Mother and pup were connected. The chain is gone. You can see where they have the little uh, loops on the sides of their heads where the chain would be. So these two would have been connected. You can rechain them if you want. But everybody else here is just on their own. And this one is my favorite right here. Is that just adorable or what? That's really unusual. So let you see uh, this one here, which is made in occupied Japan. And those are the years, of course, that the United States occupied Japan after the Second World War. The first occupied Japan pieces came into this country in 1947. I know the war ended in 45 and we occupied Japan uh, prior to 1947, but imports did not come into the U.S. until 1947 and they continued to come in until either 52 or 54, I don't remember, but it doesn't matter. So late 40s into early 50s is occupied Japan. Some of these are just simply marked Japan. That one happens to be another occupied Japan. So we can date all these to the late 40s to early 50s. This one just says Japan, so this is probably after the occupation. Although some of these could even be uh, before the war, uh, which would be before 1941. And it's just a wonderful collection. Now, if Tippy, Tippy Hedren walked in here, she'd have a fit. No, it's not the attack of the birds, uh, but we do have a nice collection of birds back here, one of which has his Royal Copley sticker right there, the remainder of it, you can see that. See there, Royal Copley. So, are they all Royal Copley? They could be. We know this one is, because it's got its sticker. Um, you be the judge on the rest. Note the bottom. Royal Copley does not always have those two ridges on the bottom that we usually see um, because clearly that one doesn't and we know it's Royal Copley. Now they're all different, although let's see, two of these are from the same mold but they're painted differently. I think, uh, see that one is Japan so we know he's not Royal Copley, but these two, let's see, well, we're, well maybe not. Anyway, they are all different. None of them are the same. That one's probably Royal Copley. <clears throat> that one probably also is as well. That may be the, the Cardinal may, may be the only uh, one from Japan. And then this diving, is he a sparrow? He could be Royal Copley as well. And the wonderful thing about these birds, again, is there are no cracks, no chips, no repairs, they're wonderful. There might be a little crazing on the glaze and that happens with a lot of old uh, pottery and porcelain and so forth. Okay, I know I went quickly. If you'd like to know more or have better pictures or read more about the descriptions of any of these items, as I said at the beginning of the video, everything 
that you see right now is available for sale in the old curiosity shop. I have put the link below. Thanks everybody for watching. I've got lots more coming up for you, including uh, one or two more thrift hauls I'm going to be posting in the next couple of days. I'm still putting new items in the shop. Um, we're going to do a couple more restoration videos and I'm still putting together my thoughts on my third installment of this and that. Remember, if there's anything you're looking for, let me know. I will say, and I'm going to apologize, um, there are times when I will sit down and go through all my emails and then there are other times when I might not even look at them for like two or three days. I know that's horrible. But if you've written to me in the last couple of days, I'm going to get to the emails. So thank you everyone who's written, to who has written this past week. I'm going to stop talking and now go and drink that coffee. It ought to be cool enough now. Wait, let's see. Hold on. I, I just, I have to. I just have to. Mm -mm -mm. You know, you can have coffee with me. You certainly may. You don't need my permission. Let's do this. Mmm, it's just right. It's absolutely good. Mmm, mmm. Look at that. I can put that right on that little mustache spot right there. Isn't that wonderful? Thanks, Garland. Okay, it's Scott from the old curiosity shop, like a heathen talking with his mouth full. Thanks for watching. <laughs> so long for now.